నమస్కారం డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయ విద్యార్థులకు స్వాగతం Today's topic is how to conduct a market survey for industrial and consumer products. Now before I tell the technique of conducting the market survey, I would like to tell you why a market survey is required for consumer and industrial products. Basically, a businessman or an industrialist is interested in estimating the demand for his or her product. In that case, both in the case of consumer and industrial products, the best way to estimate the current demand potential for his or her product is to conduct a thorough market survey. The best procedure of conducting this market survey is through a questionnaire market survey, because that will give an unbiased opinion about the consumers and the feedback will be proper and the estimation of demand will be unbiased and you will get a correct picture of the current demand potential for the product, both in the case of consumer as well as industrial products. Now, the end users of the consumer products are the households, whereas the end users of the industrial products are the industries which consume this product in their process of production. Therefore, while conducting the market survey, one has to be aware for which product you are conducting the market survey, whether you are conducting the market survey for consumer product or you are conducting the market survey for industrial product. If you are conducting a market survey for consumer products, you have to identify the consumer households who are pertaining to that area where you want to conduct a market survey. The market survey can be either a state survey or an all India survey or it may be even a district survey for that matter. So, in that case you identify the end users that is the households for consumer product survey in the locality where you uh, want to conduct the market survey. That is the first step of conducting the market survey. Similarly, in the case of industrial products and market survey, you identify the industries for which you want to conduct the market survey in the area where you are trying to conduct the market survey. Now, here there is a problem. The population of end users is generally large and therefore, we have to resort to sampling technique. So, the second step is to use the proper statistical technique to select a sample of end users for conducting the market survey. It is true of both consumer as well as industrial products. Now, there are major three or four statistical techniques which are used for uh, conducting the market survey, uh, I mean uh, taking the sample uh, of end users. Now, the first is the simple random sampling, the second is the systematic sampling, the third is the stratified sampling, the fourth is the cluster sampling. Now, all these techniques I am sure you must have learnt in your uh, statistics lessons. So, we can use any one of these statistical techniques and select a proper sample of end users. Note one thing, unless you use the statistical techniques to collect the, uh, the end users and make a sample, your estimation of demand will not be unbiased. So, you have to use one of these statistical techniques to select a sample of end users. You cannot just select ad hoc sample and then uh, do the market survey, both in the case of consumer as well as industrial products. So, that is the second step. Now, the third step is to prepare the questionnaire for conducting the market survey. Here comes the difference. For consumer product market survey, the questionnaire is entirely different from the questionnaire for industrial product market survey. The basic reason because 
the end users of consumer products are households. So, the questionnaire of consumer products is addressed to the households, whereas the questionnaire for industrial products is addressed to the industries where this product is being used as in the process of production. Now, in the case of questionnaire for uh, consumer products, we have a set of say uh, 10 questions we can ask because we do not want to take much time in uh, you know conducting the survey. So, the time being limited, we can have a sort of uh, 10 questions for conducting the markets uh, for consumer products and also 10 questions for preparing the, uh, the market survey for industrial product. For uh, consumer product market survey, the questionnaire runs like this. Question number 1, name of the head of the household. Question number 2 is the address of the household. Question number 3 is the number of members in the household. Then the a part of that question that is 3 a will be the composition of the members of the household in terms of both sex as well as age. So, in the case of sex you will make two columns male and female, age you will have less than 5, then 5 to 15, 15 and 25 and 25 and above. Then the fourth question will be income of the household. The fifth question will be the name of the brand which you are purchasing at present. The sixth question will be the requirement for the entire household at present for the product. This will be in terms of either per month or per annum whichever way the uh, respondent responds. Then the next question will be do you contemplate any increase in the above requirement in the next one or two months or one or two years if he is able to tell otherwise one or two months. Then the next question, question number 8 will be what price you are paying for the product at present for the, it will be the reply will be in terms of say rupees per kg and all that. Then uh, the next question will be are you satisfied with the product at present. You see the answer will be in terms of either yes or no. Again the you know the sub uh, questions for that uh, question will be if the answer is yes why and the alternatives will be either it is a because of good quality or reasonable price or both. Well, if it is no even then you have to ask whether uh, it is because of the poor quality or high price or both why you are saying no it is not uh, satisfactory. The next question would be would you like to switch over to the new brand if it is made available in the market. Again the answer will be in terms of yes or no. So, these are some of the questions important questions which should be covered in the market survey for consumer products. Now, let us turn to the questionnaire for industrial products. The first question will be the name of the industry using this product. The next question will be the address of the industry that is very important you must note down the address while doing the survey. The third question is the norm of consumption that is in terms of the AIJ as they call it that is per, uh, per unit per year. It is the amount of I that is used by the jth industry per, in, per, uh, per annum and which is used in its process of production that is called the AIJ that is called also the, the technology coefficient the norm of consumption. The next is the current production of the industry in terms of you know the units per annum how much it is currently producing. The next question will be do you have any future plans of expansion that is very important because if you if the industry is trying to expand then they will require more of your product and therefore, this question is a very pertinent one do you have any plans of expansion the answer will be in terms of yes or no and if the answer is yes you have to also ask to what level the um, uh, firm is going to expand. Then it will be answer will be in terms of the units per year. The next question will be are you satisfied with the quality of the product you are getting at present that is very important. Again the answer will be in terms of yes or no. If it is yes then you have to again ask what are the reasons say it is a good quality reasonable price or both. Then if it is no again maybe it is because of poor quality high price and both. Then the next question will be what is your lead time 
that is important. In the case of industrial products, the lead time is a very important factor which determines the demand for the product for which you are conducting the survey. So, what is your lead time? The answer will be in terms of either it is a one week or a fortnight or three months or six months or whatever. Then the next question will be at what price you are getting the product at present. So, it will be in terms of the per ton and all that and the brand which you are purchasing. The next question will be in terms of the brand which you are purchasing. That brand is very important, name of the brand in the case of industrial product. Then the, the last question will be are you getting the product in time? The answer will be again in terms of yes or no. If yes, it is ok, you need not ask any further question. If it is no, then you have to ask the reasons why you are not getting the product in time. So, these are some of the questions which uh, go into the industrial product market survey which are very important to be incorporated. Others can be incorporated, but uh, you know the given the time and the cost and all that, uh, it is enough to incorporate these questions while you are doing the survey. Then the next step after preparing the questionnaire is to locate a proper investigator to conduct the market survey. To locate a proper investigator is as important as conducting the market survey itself. Unless you locate a proper investigator to conduct the market survey, the estimation of demand will not be unbiased and therefore, you would not get a proper estimation of demand. Both it is true of both consumer as well as industrial products. So, locating a proper investigator is the next step as soon as you prepare the questionnaire. Then after uh, locating the investigator and uh, administering the questionnaire to all the end users which you have selected as sample using your name, any of the statistical techniques which I have described above. You analyze the data which has come back to you, the questionnaire data and eventually the last step is you arrive at the total demand for the product by analyzing the individual questionnaires. Supposing there are 10 questionnaires and the each for each questionnaire the estimation of demand is D 1, D 2, D 3, D 4, D 5, D 6 up to D 10. Then the total demand will be sigma D i, i going from 1 to 10. After preparing the questionnaire and choosing the proper investigator. We administer the questionnaire to sample of all the end users which have been selected by the statistical techniques which I have described above and analyze the data from the questionnaire to arrive at the demand. Supposing there are 10 questionnaires which we have sampled for either consumer product or industrial product. then the total demand for estimation is d is equal to sigma d i, i going from 1 to n, n is small n I mean. This gives the total sample demand. Then to arrive at the total population demand for the product both for consumer as well as industrial products, we use the following formula the total population demand is equal to n by n into sigma d i, again i going from 1 to small n, where n is the total population of end users. Mind you this n is the capital N, whereas the earlier n was the small n, the sample size. So, this gives the total population demand which is obtained from the questionnaire market survey both in the case of consumer as well as industrial products. The total population demand as estimated above from the questionnaire market survey data gives the estimation of current demand. The current demand which is there for the product as of now I mean the both for consumer as well as for industrial product. Now, this gives you an idea of the market potential which exists as of now for the product. And if it is an unbiased market survey, 
which has been conduct by, conducted by an unbiased and a proper experienced investigator. This will give a precise estimate of the current market potential for consumer as well as for industrial product, whichever the case be. Now, this estimation of current demand is very important for the point of view of the industry and also from the point of view of the individual company to which that uh, industry I mean uh, belongs. Now, the current demand will give you an estimate of the current market potential. Unless you know about the current market potential for the product, you will not be able to plan the production accordingly. That is one. The second aspect is if there are enough suppliers already there in the market, then the current demand potential estimation becomes somewhat more curious. You know, you have to estimate the total population demand as given by the above formula and then subtract the amount of supply that is coming in as of now into the market for the product both for consumer as well as industrial product and arrive at the market potential by subtracting the total demand from the supply, the existing supply. And if the difference is that is the D minus S as they call it is positive, then you have a current market potential for your product in the real sense of the term mind you. If S is greater than 0, if S is equal to 0, then the total demand as estimated by the above formula will give you the demand potential. Now, in case the D minus S becomes negative, then there is no market potential as such for the product as of now and therefore, it is advisable for the industry or the company of which the industry is, is the whole has to shift to another product which has got a market potential where D minus S will be positive. There is no point in pursuing that product where the market potential is less than 0 because in that case the you know the profits will not be there. Therefore, in the current business scenario which is most competitive as of now as you know, it is very much essential to conduct the detailed market survey arrive at the total population demand for your area either it is a district or a state or all India. And in case the existing suppliers are there which are enough in number then you arrive at the estimation of the market potential given by D minus S and judge whether D minus S is positive, D minus S is equal to 0 or D minus S is less than 0. In the first case you go ahead with the commercialization of the product. In the second case well you stand a good chance but the competition will be there because this is exactly the D is matching with S. Whereas, in the third case you should never go ahead commercializing the product because the potential is not at all existing. This should be carefully analyzed when you are starting a new industry or a new company for a specific product both in the case of consumer as well as industrial product. Therefore, the importance of market survey as of today is very very great because the market survey will give you the exact, exact estimation of the total population demand that exists for the product. And therefore, you will be able to estimate the current demand potential precisely only when you conduct a thorough market survey for the product. Again, I can just repeat the most important aspects of market survey are you have to identify the end users, you have to see that uh, you select a proper sample of end users for conducting the market survey, then you prepare a proper questionnaire which I have detailed above in about the 10 questions for both consumer and industrial products. Then you choose a proper investigator to conduct the market survey, then eventually you arrive at the total population demand by analyzing the demand 
from individual questionnaires as I have detailed above in the formulas. Now, the once you are sure of the current demand market potential that is d minus s is greater than 0, then you will have no problem in uh, getting the profits once you commercialize the pro product into the market. Commercializing the product into the market both in the case of consumer as well as industrial product is very dangerous without conducting a proper market survey and arriving at the correct current demand market potential. So, conducting a market survey which is scientific in nature using statistical techniques and all that is very much essential for any industry or any company for that matter as of today because of the competitive world that we are in as of now. The estimation of demand is as important as starting your own industry or your own company in that product enthusiastically once you have some money for investment. You cannot uh, just go ahead and uh, invest into the product without estimating the proper demand. So, the importance of market survey as you can see is very very great as of now in the business competitive world. Earlier also it was there, but now it has become more severe because of the openness of the economy and uh, more uh, MNCs coming into the market. Therefore, if you want to survive in, in the market, you have to estimate the current demand potential for the product using a scientific market survey which has been detailed in this uh, uh, lesson. Now, the ca consumer products and industrial products differ only in the in respect of the end users. So, while preparing the questionnaire for industrial products uh, consumer products you should be very careful about whom you are addressing to. The consumer products has to be addressed to the household. So, it should be of a different different pattern altogether whereas, for industrial products it is addressed to the industries. So, it has to be of a different pattern altogether. Unless this point is uh, taken care of uh, properly the questionnaire market survey will, will not be successful. And then the sampling techniques which I underlined above they are very very important you see you must have learnt all these techniques in your statistics lessons anyway. So, I do not want to go into details of that, but the main techniques that are used in market survey are the simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling and the cluster sampling. Now, stratified and cluster are used when the you know the population is different in different areas in respect of composition uh, I mean either it is sex age or whatever. If it there is a wide differences are there in region to region then we use the stratified or cluster sampling. If the region wise or um, I mean district wise or state wise the composition is not very much different then we can as well use the simple random sampling or systematic sampling. The simplest of all these techniques is the simple random sampling. Now, it depends on the time and the cost. If the time is there and the cost is uh, not prohibitive, you can use the more sophisticated techniques of stratified and clusters, cluster sampling. If the time is short and the cost is prohibitive, then you should use only the uh, simple random sampling or systematic sampling. But all said and done, you have to use a scientific statistical technique in order to select a sample of end users. You know uh, at times when you are conducting a market survey this point is always overlooked by the industrialists, by the persons who want to start industries. And these days the financial institutions who are financing the projects they have become very alert in analyzing the data which you supply to them in order to get the finance from the financial institutions and start the project. So, to make them uh, convincing the only way is to go for a scientific market survey. By scientific I mean using the statistical techniques 
for the selection of end users. So, once you adopt all these methods in a scientific manner, the estimation of current demand and the demand potential will be proper. And therefore, you there is no reason why the industry or the company will not make profits, because the main emphasis on which the project or the, the commercialization of product depends is the estimation of demand. If the demand is there, if the demand potential is there, you should go ahead with the project. If the demand is not there, demand potential is not there, whatever technology you adopt, you will not be able to be successful in the project or the product which you are going to commercialize. It is true of both uh, consumer as well as industrial products. So, the market survey technique which I have uh, enumerated is useful both for industries which want to go in for consumer product and industries which want to go in for industrial products. This is one aspect. The other aspect is those which are existing industries, they want to go for expansion. Then in that case also, this market survey is essential, because they should know to what level they should go for expansion. If they want to go for expansion say about uh, say 100 units or 1000 units, they cannot just go on ad hoc basis, both in the case of consumer as well as industrial products. So, a market survey is required to find out how much expansion is feasible whether it is 100 units or 1000 units, both in the case of consumer as well as industrial products. And all the steps which I have underlined above have to be taken into account even when you are conducting a market survey for the existing industries. For existing industries, the data collection is not much difficult, whereas for the new industries which are I mean, ex, I mean just, uh, just being started or just being commercialized, the data is getting is somewhat more difficult, because you do not have a what is called a something to fall back on. Whereas, in the case of existing industries, you have something to fall back on. But anyway, all said and done, if you have a proper investigator, he can collect the data for both industries and companies which have just started and commercializing the product, both in the case of consumer as well as industrial product, as well as for existing industries, which are there in the market and they want to go for expansion, both for consumer as well as industrial products. It all depends on your choice of investigator, it all depends on the proper questionnaire, it all depends on the proper analysis of data and it all depends on how much I mean, uh, you have taken pains in taking the sample of end users using the statistical techniques. All these aspects should be taken care of in order to arrive at the proper uh, current demand potential. Ma karikramalape, me suchanalu, salhalu, telichete. Ma chirunama, Director, Audio Visual Production and Research Center, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Open University, Professor G. Ram Redimark, Road Number 46, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad, Aido Sunna Sunna, Sunna Modu Modu.
In this lesson, I will be explaining the demand forecasting techniques. These techniques will enable the industrialist or a businessman to arrive at the future demand for the product. As in the earlier case where we estimated the current demand potential in the market survey techniques, here also we make a distinction between consumer products and the industrial products. In the case of consumer products, the linear models which are used for forecasting the demand are different from the linear models which are used for forecasting the industrial product demand. In the case of consumer products, there are two things. One is the demand forecasting can be done by taking only one influential factor. The other thing where you can take it several factors which influence the consumer product demand and then you do the forecasting. To be in a very precise manner, we estimate the demand for, uh, for the product in future by taking the simplest model where we take the most influential factor which influences the consumer product demand. In the similarly, in the case of industrial product demand also, we take the most influential factor which influences the demand for the product and we forecast the demand. The linear model which is used for forecasting the demand for consumer product is given by linear demand forecasting model for consumer products. Mind you, it is a single equation two variable model it is given by d t is equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t, where d t is the demand for consumer product at time t, x t is the most influencing factor for the consumer product. Now, any of these may be influencing factors namely income or price or population, whichever is most influential we use that as x t. Now, alpha and beta are the parameters of the linear model, u t is the error term which takes care of all the factors other than x t which influence the demand for the consumer product in question. The parameters alpha and beta are estimated by the OLS technique. Under this the normal equations are sigma d t is equal to alpha plus beta. In fact, it is n alpha, n alpha plus beta into sig sigma x t. This is the first normal equation. The second normal equation is sigma x t d t is equal to alpha sigma x t plus beta sigma x t square. That is the second normal equation. Now, solving the two simultaneous equations, we get alpha estimated value of alpha as d t bar minus beta hat into x t bar that is the value of alpha hat that is the first estimator. So, this I call as equation 3. Now, what is d t bar? d t bar is I can say where where d t bar is sigma d i, i going from 1 to n divided by n. This is d t bar. Similarly, x t bar is sigma x t i divided by, in fact, it is d t i by n, i going from 1 to n. Now, the value of beta hat is given by sigma d t x t by sigma x t square, where small d t is nothing but d t minus d t bar and 
small x t is nothing but capital X t minus x t bar. So, the first step is using the past data we estimate the values for d t bar and x t bar and after estimating the values for d t bar and x t bar we substitute in these two equations and get the values for alpha and beta. Therefore, the estimated model for demand forecasting mind you this is for consumer products is given by d t cap or d t hat is equal to alpha hat plus beta hat x t. Now, after having estimated this linear model using the OLS technique as I have described above, we take various scenarios for x t future values. depending on the situation where you are in. Supposing you are in a very bright situation as far as the economy is concerned, we can say that x t is increasing every year or if the economy is not improving and it is in a downward shape, we can say x t is going down that is as far as the per capita income is concerned. Whereas, if it is price, maybe you can always think of a scenario like the price is increasing in the beginning and then going down later on. In the same manner, the price is decreasing in the beginning and increasing later on. So, some of these scenarios can be used for various values for x t and depending on the various scenarios of x t, we can generate the demand d t hat that is the demand forecast for the consumer product for the next 10 years to come. Mind you this procedure of obtaining the demand forecast using the linear model for consumer products is valid only for the existing products where the past data for 10 years is available on d t and x t. The demand for the product as well as the, the most influencing factor which is x t. Now, in case it is a new product where there is no past demand available, we cannot use the linear model we use the two techniques which are either the Delphi technique or the market survey technique. The second one I have already explained in the previous lesson. In the first, uh, the first one that is the Delphi technique, what we do is we identify a subject expert or the product expert as they call it and we identify a series of experts maybe about 4 or 5 and call for a meeting, prepare a questionnaire for them and then give the questionnaire to these experts and ask them what they feel the demand for the product will be around in the next 4 to 5 years. Now, the questionnaires are called back and analyzed. If there is a variance in the estimate of demand given by various experts, again the questionnaire is prepared and uh, circulated among the experts and this procedure goes on until you get a unified expert opinion as far as the product demand for future is concerned. So, this is the best way of obtaining the demand for future for those products where there is no past data available that is they are not the existing products they are brand new products which have come into the market. 
The other one is the market survey technique which I explained in the previous lesson where you prepare the questionnaire, go to the end users, collect the information as, as to the demand and also their likely demand in future and then estimate the future demand. That is how it is done. Now, these techniques are subjective in nature, both Delphi as well as market survey technique because you when you identify experts in the field, it is possible that you are not identifying the ex, all the experts which are there in the field or which are there for the product. That is one. Second thing is you do not have time to call for an expert meeting. So, therefore, you, you are just happy uh, calling one or two experts and then call them for the meeting and uh, estimate the demand. That is second. The third is the estimate given by these experts all said and done may be subjective in nature because one expert meeting may arrive at one estimate whereas, a second round of experts may arrive at a second estimate. The better uh, procedure to estimate the future demand for a new product where there is no past data and where we cannot use, use the linear models which I explained above is the market survey technique that is more reliable than using the Delphi technique. You identify the end users, prepare the questionnaire, you incorporate a question where you ask them what is your likely demand for future you feel will be maybe about in about an year or so or what is your likely requirement in future maybe he will be able to tell you about 6 months from now or 1 year from now. So, with I think that is more reliable than using the Delphi technique, but all said and done both these sub uh, techniques are subjective in nature. Now, if the consumer product which has been identified as a new product, but at the same time it is similar to a product which was already existing, we can always make use of that similar product past data and do the use the linear models and get a more reliable estimate than these two techniques will give. Because after all these two techniques are very subjective in nature. Therefore, what I conclude is as far as consumer products of course, it is the same true with the industrial products also I will be telling you in, in a short while from now. Now, in the case of consumer products if you want to have a more precise demand forecast for the product you should use the linear models which I described them above. Now, let us come to the industrial product. In the case of industrial product also we have to identify the factors which influence the industrial product demand. Yeah, in the case of industrial products this the linear model for forecasting the demand for industrial products is given by d t dash is equal to a plus b x t dash plus u t dash, where d t dash is the demand at time t and x t dash is again the most influencing factor. for demand. This x t prime can take the shape of production of the end user industry. This is the most influencing factor production of the end user industry. In most of the cases, the production of the end user industry is the most influencing factor which influences the demand for an industrial product. So, x t prime in most of the cases takes this shape of the production of the end user industry. The production of the end user industry can be obtained by taking the CMIE publications. 
Now, again uh, as before A and B are the parameters. and u t dash or u t prime as they say is the error term for the which takes care of all the factors which have not been taken care of in x t prime as in the case of consumer product. Now, again we make use of the ordinary least square technique. Again we make use of the ordinary least square technique to estimate the values for A and B. the normal equations are first one is again d t prime is equal to n a plus b sigma x t prime. Mind you prime is very important because we have to distinguish between the d t earlier in the consumer product and the d t here. Same thing with x t earlier and x t here. So, this is industrial product that is what we are doing now. So, the sigma runs from 1 to n then this sigma also runs from 1 to n. The second normal equation is again x t prime d t prime again i's will be there definitely i going from 1 to n is equal to a sigma x t prime i going from 1 to n plus b sigma x t i prime square. So, these are the two normal equations I call them 1 equation 1 and equation 2 which will enable the estimation of a and b. We have to solve these two simultaneous equations and estimate the values of a and b. So, finally, we will get an estimate like this a cap or a hat as they call it is equal to d prime bar minus b hat x t prime bar. This is what again similarly as in the case of consumer products d t prime bar is the mean of all the values of d t i going from 1 to n divided by n and x t prime bar is equal to sigma i going from 1 to n x t i prime divided by n. So, this is the value of a hat. Now, the value of b hat will be given by sigma d t small d t prime small x t prime divided by sigma x t prime square these are all small letters mind you and the small letters convey what do they convey as in the case of consumer products it is d t prime minus d t prime bar the second one small x t prime is x t prime x t prime minus x t prime bar. So, one should be careful about this uh, notations you know the small letters and the capital letters. So, once you estimate the values for a and b we will get the estimated model as before as in the case of consumer products d t prime cap or hat is equal to a hat plus b hat x t prime. Now, again you use the scenarios. for x t prime. Now, in this case the scenario is with respect to the production of the end user industry. Which is x t prime. Now, these various scenarios of production of end user industry can be obtained from the either the publications or from the end user himself. The end user himself will give you an idea as to what production level is going to expand in the next 
4 or 5 years or in the next 5 to 10 years also for that matter. And based on those production pro projections which are given by the end user, we project the demand that is DT prime accordingly. Now, in the case of existing products, these models are very useful. Again, in the case, as in the case of consumer product, in industrial products also, when it is a brand new product, we have to again use the same techniques that is the, the Delphi technique and the market survey technique. If it is a brand new product where there is no past data available or the market survey technique. These are the two techniques which are available for brand new products. Mind you, when you are using the market survey technique as I have detailed in the previous lesson, the market survey technique when you are estimating the future demand, the questionnaire to be used is entirely different from the questionnaire that you use for the consumer products. So, if you use the correct questionnaire and you incorporate a question where you ask the end user as to what you are likely demand for the product for the next 5 to 10 years. If you incorporate that question in the questionnaire, you will be able to estimate the market survey technique demand forecast for the consumer uh, industrial product. I mean, this is more reliable than again the Delphi technique, which is more subjective, where you know you identify the experts and call for their opinion, prepare the questionnaire, circulate the questionnaire, and you keep on circulating the questionnaire until you arrive at a consensus estimate. This can be used if you are not able to spare time for market survey, then Delphi technique is the only other way where you can estimate the demand for a brand new product which is not existing in the market. Because the product is not existing in the market, we cannot use the linear model. The data that is required for the linear model cannot be obtained from the publications because it is not available in the market. Now, once again as in the case of consumer products, if this industrial product which is a new one, but it is similar to an existing product, then we can use that similar data and use the linear model for forecasting the demand for industrial products also. In both case of consumer as well as industrial products, the sources of data that are available for getting the past data to fit the linear model to forecast the demand are have to be the secondary sources of data are the CMIE publication. which gives the most uh, reliable past data as well as the CSO publications. This is as far as the all India estimate of demand is concerned. If you want a state wise estimate for demand for future, then you can use the, the data obtained from the Bureau of Economics and Statistics of the respective state, where whichever state, whichever state for which you are estimating the future demand. Now, these are the three main publications from where you should get the past data in order to get a reliable demand forecast both for consumer as well as industrial product. Now, apart from this, there may be some what are called the product journals. which may give the reliable data which can be used for forecasting the demand using the linear models both in the case of exist, I mean the consumer as well as industrial products. This again is valid only when it is an existing product. 
if it is a brand new product, the secondary sources of data may not be able to give the past data that we are looking for in order to use the uh, linear models for forecasting the demand. Again, as I said before, if it is a similar product, then these publications may help you to get a past data of a similar product. How far the product is similar, one has to examine. If the product is too much similar, this uh, the data which is obtained from any of these publications can be used for fitting the linear models which I have described above. Now, the most reliable demand forecasts can be obtained only through the linear models which I have described above. The other methods of forecasting the demand are more subjective in nature as I explained above also. The best way is to look for the past data either it is through the publication secondary sources or the company data itself. Company itself may give the past data. So, in, in which case you can use the company data itself and forecast the demand for the respective product. Again the, the forecast mind you may be either it is a state wide forecast or it may be nationwide forecast or it may even be a district wide forecast as in the case of market survey lesson which I described earlier. So, if we want the demand forecast to be reliable for both existing as well as for the new products, these techniques which I have described above should be made use of in order that we get a reliable demand forecast for future. Now, when we are making use of the linear models, we have to ensure that we use the two statistic that is the T statistic for the X T variable which I have taken in the consumer product and the T statistic for the X T prime variable which is used for the industrial product and test whether there is a they are significant or not. Once you identify a proper X T and X T prime, there is no reason why the, the significance the statistical significance will not be there and they, once you get a significant statistical estimate for using this student's T all this you must have learnt in your statistics lessons and you estimate the R square for the linear models both the linear models both for consumer as well as industrial products. Ma karikram alape me suchanalu salahalu telichayate ma chirunama Director, Audio Visual Production and Research Center, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Open University, Prof. G. Ram Reddy Mark, Road No. 46, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad, Aido Sunna Sunna, Sunna Modu Modu.